Puncture plugs are great, except when they're not. This is a patient. Why in the world is there mucus coming out of the puncta? Very kind description. I would call this pus. The patient <laughs> had actually continued to complain about recurrent gl eyes glued shut in the morning, white discharge come out of the eye, and here you can see a close-up of what I was able to express out of the punctum, which you can see is the punctum encased with a amount of buildup of bacteria that then obviously produced an immune reaction. So the body tried to fight this. It was a foreign body and produced pus. So this was a punctal plug that got pushed in a little too deep. It was beyond where the opening of the puncta was and started building up all that material. Correct. Uh, here to numb, to treat further, because this is not comfortable for the patient, I numb the lid with an injection of lidocaine and epinephrine on the backside of the lid. This numbs the canaliculus, which is right here, um, and thus provides more relief and more comfort. Although this patient still wasn't very comfortable. She said it was better than what she'd gone through before. We routinely do apply pressure to the eyelids, for example, when we're doing meibomian gland expression, but especially in this case, that area is very tender with any kind of pressure. But the pressure in any dry eyed patient that usually do this should be applied closer to the nose, almost like pushing to the nasal lacrimal sac, and then into the canaliculus here to make sure if there's the patient complains of any discharge that you express it as much as possible. And even of that early expression, you can see there's still plenty more pus coming out uh, out of the punctum in this particular case. And this was after numbing with two Q-tips now, more, uh, more pus is expressed. And this is pus that's been built up now, not just in the where the opening is, but deeper in the cannulicula is the tube network that it's called. And that'll ultimately goes down into our nose, but there's quite a bit of space there for the pus to build up. So here, a large amount of pus is still exp expressed um, because of that buildup, as you mentioned, and the canaliculus goes all the way towards the nose, and I try to massage with the two Q-tips as close to the nose as I possibly can. Oftentimes, in regular canaliculitis, there's buildup of uh, stones, quote-unquote, that are right in here that are made out of bacteria. In this case, I did not find any, but I want to make sure I express and clean out the canaliculus as best I can. And part of ensuring there truly were no stones, uh, you actually are going to take this instrument now and just snip open the puncta to make it a little larger and make sure everything gets expressed out of there. Correct. So the decrylis, I believe they're called, are larger. They sit behind the puncta. And the puncta is this very small, tense surface opening. It's a ring and the canaliculus can enlarge quite significantly behind it, and also oftentimes does. That's why punctum plug sits so well. But I would not be able to extract something bigger from behind that punctum unless it's opened. And that wound heals fairly quickly. This heals within a week. It can sometimes be open too much, especially in a patient that has dry eye. So in this particular patient, I cauterized the punctum later on to provide her more relief because she liked the presence of the puncta, puncto plug, just not the pus. Here I make sure I irrigate with an antibiotic. I use tobramycin. Usually in somebody with canaliculitis, I irrigate with a solution of iodine to make sure that I provide as much sterilization as I possibly can. And because of the dryness, we placed a plug, this time making sure it sits on the surface in the upper lid.